Hello and welcome to the channel. How's everybody doing today? We are going to be taking a look at a Turtles of Skull Leonardo, the heroic ninja turtle leader. As you can see here on the box, we got some really cool colors. It kind of matches up with the old school He-Man vintage kind of box with the broken rocks, but then we've got them switched over to the green and purple, so they're more in the um, Ninja Turtle colors. We've got He-Man up here in the top corner, and that's kind of cool. I'm looking forward to see how they do the He-Man that is not the mutated He-Man. And then we got Leonardo over here. As we flip the box around, we got a cool little picture on the back here of Leonardo with his double swords fighting Shredder. It says, an explosion from the Technodrome sends the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles across dimensions to Eternia. Now augmented with tech from Man-at-Arms Armory, Leonardo leads his brothers into battle for the power of Grayskull. So we've already got the review for He-Man and Man-at-Arms finished. Getting ready to do Leonardo, and then we will do Donatello. Probably next week on Turtle Tuesday or Turtle Thursday. So let's go ahead and get this guy pulled out of the package and go from there. Turtles of Grayskull, the power by the power of pizza. So here, let's take a look at the inside of this one. We're not gonna take a long look at every page. I'll just kind of open it up. If you guys want to pause that and take a look at it in closer detail, you definitely can do that. We have looked at this comic two times previously when we looked at He-Man and Man at Arms. However, that one did not have the words, so I am surprised, pleasantly surprised, to see we actually get words in this one. This Krang here, this is actually a guy that I'm still looking for, so hopefully we'll find him pretty soon. We do have all of the ones in this wave, though, so the reviews for all of these, except for Donatello, will be up after this Leonardo video, and Donatello should be up pretty soon. 
As we take a look at Leonardo, he's really cool. This is the first one of the turtles of these line that I've opened. Like I said, I did the Man-at-Arms and the He-Man already. I wasn't sure if I was even going to get the turtles. Um, but now that I have this guy out of the box and in hand, I think he's absolutely great. Um, I love everything about him, even the stuff that I thought was kind of silly, the, the armor and stuff that they've got on here. It looks actually really good. The darker green tone of the skin, everything's just looking really good on this Leonardo. So I'm definitely happy that I picked him up. His little, um, his little bits of armor and stuff slide on. They seem like they're going to stay pretty well. I like this way that they've got the armor developed. The older armor, Beastman armor and stuff like that, it would just fall off of the arm. So I'm definitely happy with how they did that. One thing that I did notice is just a little bit of quality control probably, but we got some blue overspray. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but from the bandana to the actual snout here, we've got some blue overspray. Uh, that's really the only place I'm seeing it is right here and a little bit right there under that eye. The rest of the paint's looking pretty good. So that's really the only complaint I got and it's not that noticeable. Um, I can't see it more than I'd like to see it now that I have seen it, but that's all right. As we flip him around to the back, he's got the standard shell that can come off, which is kind of weird. And then he has this green like shell underneath of it. I don't like the look of that. This armor will pop off also. Just comes out right there. But I like how they put the fur here that kind of goes up over it. And then, as you know, the, the shell doubles as a shield. So he can hold on to this. And I guess now it'll protect his front instead of his back. But I prefer to keep the shell on the turtle. I think that aesthetically it looks the best that way. Uh, it's not such an issue with the uh, man-at-arms. He also comes with the similar style setup. Um, but with Leonardo and I feel like the other turtles, it's probably important to keep that, keep that shell on him. So now we'll go through the articulation that he's got. Uh, he can look to the left. We can look to the right. Our bandana will swing back and forth so you can pose the... The ends of the bandana, however you would like. I'll just keep that shell off for just a second. Uh, that's as far up as he can look. And then that is a pretty good, pretty good ways to look down. His arm will rotate all the way around, even with this gauntlet on. However, it does seem to hit here. So it goes all the way up, but it will push up on your shoulder armor. We do have single jointed elbows, so it gets about a 90 degree bend there pretty much what we expect we have a horizontal joint at the wrist so you can move it and then it will also spin 360 degrees as we come down to the waist fully spins the waist pretty good splits going on for Leonardo as far as the back and forth not so much we do have single jointed knees pretty decent bend there boot swivel and then we've got the ankle swivel and rocker so you can point the toe down you can point the toe up well they go they go far on the turtles here i like that got a lot of articulation in the turtle feet so let's go ahead and i guess we'll put this shell back on him maybe i had it on upside down yeah it seems like it's fitting better in it this way the um the handle has to be pointed at the bottom i guess Let's go ahead and get Leonardo set up here. So he's a pretty cool figure. I'm definitely liking him. Happy to get him displayed out with the rest of my Turtles of Grayskull figures. I'm kind of setting up a little diorama with just those guys. What we'll go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and off camera pull off all of his armor and stuff so we can get a look at just what the turtle looks like. So here we've got Leonardo's armor pulled off. And when you have him broke down to just the basic turtle form, you can see that he's still got some really cool detail. The front of his or his stomach part of the shell, I really like the way that that's sculpted to look like a turtle, but still also fit in with the He-Man kind of buck line. Uh, they, he's got the, the standard He-Man loincloth, the furry underwear. They didn't paint his belt a separate color, which I feel like would have been cool if they would have just made it the same color 
as his wrist bracers, which they did a great job on. Um, standard looking He-Man wrist bracers, but they definitely have that nice metallic paint job. It looks like metal. It's not shiny like vac metal, but it's got that metal look, and I'm definitely liking that. Uh, the boots, we go down, and we have the top of your standard He-Man boots, basically, but then they just take them off and put turtle feet on the bottom. In my personal opinion, this would have looked better if they would have done it the way that they did the mutated He-Man and kind of put some of the boot onto the foot as well, even if it was just some of this wrap around the bulkier part of his foot. Maybe have his toes or his heel, toes and heel hanging out. But this is how they decided to do it. It doesn't make the most sense, but this is what we've got. Now we're going to flip them around and we're going to take a look at my least favorite part of the turtle. And that is the shell or the lack of shell. Now, when we take the armor off, there's no place to attach the shell to the back of the turtle. So we just get this green kind of same color as the buck molded on shell piece. And I wouldn't even be so against this if they just would have made this brown. If they just would have colored this the color of the shell, maybe slightly darker than his loincloth here, um, then it would still look more like a shell instead of just kind of like uh, the indentation of the shell onto the turtle's skin. Just really weird that they did that and didn't make it a separate color so that it still said shell. But all in all, Leonardo is looking really good. Um, I'm excited to get Donatello out. I saved him uh, for last out of this wave because I just feel like he looked the best out of all of them. So I wanted to do him last before we get to the next wave. Um, and I will quickly show you how you put his armor back on. So he just splits apart in the middle here. A little harder than I thought it was going to be and then you want to go ahead and pop his head off as well just kind of set that to the side and then you will take the the top part of the armor and this right here will just kind of fasten up under and then this will slide over where the head goes and then this little square will go into this little hole right here easy easy just like that and then the Shell has these two little plugs. You want to make sure you have the handle facing downward. Don't drop the shell. And then those two little will slide up under the, the fake fur. And then those two pegs will just plug in right there. And then you can put his legs just snap back into place. His head just snap back on. These big shoulder gauntlets. They will just slide right up his arm. And then you kind of just press fit those into place where you want them. And go ahead and get the other one on also. I'm going to leave the forearm one off because I feel like maybe that's just a little bit too much. I wonder if there'd be any way to get it kind of like a shin guard down here. Um, let's, let's try. Let's just put the foot at straight and then see if we can slide that on in there. It's not really wanting to go up high enough to go up over that fur there. So it looks, looks like that's going to be a fail as far as working that way. Um, you may be able to take the, let's see. Yeah, it's not wanting to come off without heating it up. And I'm not trying to stretch it out or break it. But you could heat this up, take the boot off. And then I bet you that that would fit right there over top of that part of the thigh. And give you kind of a man at arms like shin guard. Uh, if you don't want it up here, I just feel like it's a lot going on on the arm. So I'm just going to leave that there to the side. As far as his, oops, we forgot to put his loincloth on and you just slide it over his legs just like that. And then he pops together and it holds into place. He's wanting to fall back on me. 
As far as the sword, I'm not, this is probably the only part of Leonardo that I'm not happy with. You can see right here where they have the things on the inside so that you clip the sword together. Very noticeable. Uh, the sword feels super cheap. I'm definitely going to keep it as one sword, even though Leonardo should technically have two swords, just because I feel like it, it looks bad when it's split apart and it's very flimsy. There is a spot in his shell back here for it. I think maybe it would go in a little easier if it was split into two. But like I said, I don't like the way it looks split into two. So there's Leonardo. I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the unboxing and the review. Let me know which turtle is your favorite, which one that is out so far is your favorite. Who is your favorite character out of the Turtles of Grayskull line? I have to say, right now, I am torn between Leonardo and Man-at-Arms. I'm hoping they come out with another version of He-Man for us. I really do like the mutated He-Man. It's just, right now for me, it's between Leonardo and Man-at-Arms. And I have a feeling that Donatello, who, who's kind of modeled after Man-at-Arms, armor-wise, is going to uh, pull into the lead for my favorite. So... We'll have to see when that video comes out. I'll get them all four out here so we can look at them all together. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to give the thumbs up on the video. Subscribe. Turn all the notifications on. Tell somebody you love them. God bless.